Hello students, welcome to another video lecture for ComSci 125 operating systems. In this chapter, we're going to look at translation look aside buffers. Basically, the TLV is used to speed up the translation of virtual address to physical address using uh, hardware support. Let's get started. So TLV is part of uh, the chip's uh, memory management unit. So the memory management unit is responsible for translating virtual address spaces to or virtual address to physical address. It's basically just a cache, a hardware cache, which uh, speeds up the virtual to physical address translation of uh, popular or uh, regularly accessed uh, memory area. Here is a diagram of how this works. So, here we have the memory management unit. Let's say we have the CPU and the CPU will uh, generate a logical address, logical or virtual address. Now this uh, virtual address will be, as described in the previous chapter, will be dissected to obtain the virtual page number and that will be there will be a TLB lookup on the MMU, so it will check whether uh, so after dissecting the logical address, you're going to get a V or the VPN okay, virtual page number. So the virtual page number, okay, uh, uh, the lookup will check first if the entry for the virtual page number already exists in the uh, TLB. So it can get the actual physical address and then uh, go directly to the physical address. So this called the TLB hit. Now, in case the virtual page number is not found on the TLB, it will have to go to the page table. Remember that the page table is in the main memory also, right? So uh, here, uh, the if we have a TLB hit, there is no need to consult the page table if there is a TLB hit. You can go directly to the uh, actual uh, location because you know the exact location for this particular virtual address. But if you have a TLB miss, okay, then this will require consulting the uh, page table. So this is an expensive operation. But uh, once uh, it has able to get the physical address, it can store that back to the TLB so that the next time that address is accessed, the page table will no longer be uh, consulted. So it will save some time or basically improve the performance. Let's take a look at the algorithm for the TLB. So the same process, as I mentioned, so you have to extract the virtual page number. And then we have a function here, TLB lookup. So this will utilize the hardware, TLB, and supply the VPN number. So if it is successful, it will return 
a TLB entry. A TLB entry is uh, the same as the page table entry. Okay. So if success is true, then we have a TLB hit. Okay. And so again, uh, this one TLB entry is the same as the page table entry. So if you can access TLB entry protection bit is true, you're allowed to access it, then you get, uh, you compute the offset and then you can directly obtain the uh, physical address and then you get the memory directly. Otherwise, you raise an exemption, uh, exception because uh, of this protection uh, mechanism, protection check. You failed the uh, protection check. And continuing, if we have a TLB miss, meaning the information is not the, uh, is not in the TLB, then you need to go to the memory. So you have to access the memory. Uh, then basically, as discussed in the previous chapter, so the page table base register plus the offset in the page table to get the PTE address and then you access the memory to get the actual PTE. And once you have the PTE, you can insert that to the TLB. So you have the BPN as the key, then the PTE uh, page frame number, and then uh, protection bits. So so actually, I, 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 I was wrong here, right? So the TLB entry is not necessarily the PTE because the PTE is uh, bigger in size compared to the TLB entry. Usually, since TLB is hardware based, it has a smaller number of bits for its entry. So shown here, uh, the main entries for a TLB entry will be the virtual page number, the page frame number, and the protection bits which can be, uh, this one here, usually are limited in the number of bits. And then, okay, so going back, we have to retry the instruction. And you now have the data for that particular uh, memory request. So that's the basic idea of this algorithm for the TLB as shown in this uh, figure. So it's just a more elaborate uh, description of how the TLB works. Just remember that the TLB is uh, hardware, implemented in the hardware. So let's take a look at an example of uh, the advantages of having a TLB when we have paging. So looking at this uh, figure here, let's have let's take a look at some of the assumptions. Here we have an 8-bit uh, virtual address space, and we have 16-byte uh, pages. So if you have this configuration, 8-bit virtual address space and 16-byte pages, then we'll have four bits to represent the virtual page number and four bits to represent the offset. So uh, to be able to achieve this configuration. And we also assume that an array A with uh, 10 elements here is loaded starting at virtual address uh, 100, right? So virtual address 100, when uh, this is decimal, when we convert this to binary, this will be 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. So it's basically 8 bits. So 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. So given this configuration, uh, this will be the VPN 
again, we have to analyze the address VPN, and this will be the offset. So VPN here. So in decimal, this will be uh, 0, 1, 2. So this will be, in decimal, this will be 6. So as you can see, uh, this is on VPN 6, right? And then the offset, uh, this will be 4. So this is the location of the first element of the array. Now, since the size of an integer is 4 bytes, so we have this uh, element occupying this uh, 4 bytes here. So this will be the configuration of this example. Now, what will happen if we use a TLB in, uh, if we have a TLB using this code? Recall that in the previous chapter, we traced uh, almost the same process wherein in the previous chapter, we did not have a TLB. But this time we have a TLB. So let's look at the access pattern. So using this loop, we first access the first element. So initially, uh, if we don't, uh, if we have a TLB, so the address is uh, 100 using the algorithm here okay we were able to extract the vpn number to be uh, six okay and uh, let's say that the tlb is still empty so the next step is to look up so we're going to look up uh, 6 in the TLB. If in the TLB is still fresh, then uh, this entry will not be present in the in the TLB. So we're going to go to the else part. We're going to have a TLB miss because let's say the TLB is still empty. So we're going to do this and we represent that as a miss. Right? Now, when we access the next element, okay, uh, this will be at offset uh, 104. Okay, this will be at 104. Okay, so let's say 104. So if we have We're going to uh, convert this to 104. You're um, still going to get the same VPN number. You're still going to get the same VPN number six. So since it's already in the TLB, it will be a hit. So there's no need to go to the. There is no need to go to this. Uh, step this is an expensive operation memory access then when we access the third element again uh, when we access the third element this will be uh, at uh, let's say 104 108 address 108 right so at address 108 if you apply the algorithm we still get the vpn of six and it's already in the uh, TLB, so it will be a hit. Okay. Now, if we access the next element, element four, okay, so the VPN will now be different. It will now be uh, VPN uh, seven, so it will be a miss. So, you know, at least I hope you can now observe the pattern here. And you will see that given this loop, okay, only uh, three misses occurred. So we have seven hits. So out of the uh, 10 memory accesses, there were, uh, we have a hit, TLB hit rate of 70%, uh, which is actually uh, a good performance because we saved some time. Uh, 
from accessing the main memory because the information that we want is already in the DLB. So the DLB actually takes advantage of uh, locality, which I think I already mentioned in the previous videos. So we have two types of locality. We have temporal locality and spatial locality. In temporal locality, an instruction or data, data item has been recently accessed will likely to be reaccessed soon in the future. And spatial locality, if a program accesses memory at address X, it will likely should access memory uh, uh, near X, as shown in this uh, illustration, these figures. So let's now talk about uh, who handles the TLB needs. In this example illustration, uh, we have a TLB means, right? So there is some code here that performs the, uh, that handles the TLB means. So one way to handle the TLB means is the hardware. Okay? So this is usually performed in uh, complex instruction set computers wherein the hardware has to know exactly where the page table are located in the main memory and it is the hardware that performs the uh, handling of the LBM. So it's a hardware uh, managed uh, TLB. So this is uh, better if uh, you have a CISC hardware, but some machines are uh, risk or reduce, reduced uh, instruction set computers, so they don't have the capability or the hardware to handle TLB misses. So it's actually the software or the kernel that uh, manages the TLB misses. So on a TLB miss, the hardware raises an exception. So what the hardware does is just to simply raise an exception, and there is a exception handler or a trap handler within the OS that basically is responsible just for uh, handling, handling uh, TLB misses. So those are the two ways that uh, a TLB miss is handled, either by hardware for SIS and or by the software uh, for risk computers. So here is uh, simpler illustration or algorithm so that uh, shows the software based handling of the LB so unlike in the previous pseudo code right so this is the uh, hardware part this is handled by the hardware here in the software uh, part it simply raises an exception in there is a exception or trap handler that will handle the TLB miss. So let's now uh, take a look at the TLB entries. In the previous chapter, we looked at the page table entry. So here we have uh, TLB entry. So as I said, uh, since TLB entry or the TLB is part of the hardware. Usually, the number of bits that uh, is used to represent information is limited, as shown here. So, one thing, one important uh, thing to note about TLB is that it is uh, fully associative, meaning uh, the search is done in parallel. So, this is not sequential search. Whenever you pass a, whenever you perform a lookup, all entries in the uh, TLB are checked simultaneously. That's one thing to remember about TLBs. And usually the size of that uh, TLB may have been uh, 32, 64, or uh, 128 entries, but this is an example of 
at the LV entry. So of course you have the virtual page number, you have the page frame number and other bits. So this is illustrated uh, uh, in this uh, uh, code. So what are these other bits? Uh, these other bits are used to check for validity, uh, for protection, and uh, ASID, and uh, the dirty bit. Okay. So what are some of the issues that uh, might arise when using ATLB? So one issue that might happen, is, may occur, is uh, confusion of the inconsistency in the TLB entry, especially during uh, context switching. To illustrate this, let's say we have two processes, process one and process two. And in process one, it access uh, virtual page number 10. So during the first access, of course, the remember that the TLB here is shared. Right? The TLB is shared by all the processes. Unlike the page table, which is unique or unique to each process, the TLB is shared by all the processes. Right? So here, if we have uh, we try to access virtual page number ten for the first time. It will be a miss, but it will be placed in the TLB in this way. So we have BPN 10, let's say uh, the PFN for this is 100, and we set the valid bit to 1, and then the protection bits to RWX. Right? Then at some point in time, a context switch happens. So remember that. Uh, when a context switch happens, a different process will be running. And this, this time, let's say this is process 2. And process 2 also accesses uh, VPN 10. So what will happen is uh, for the first access, it will also fail. But uh, it might put an entry here, 10, also but it has a different uh, page frame number. So there will be two entries for uh, the VPN number 10. So that's that will be trouble, right? Because, because we cannot uh, distinguish uh, who owns which uh, 10, right? So remember that this is a TLB, so the checking is done simultaneously. So it's actually even possible that when you when process to access uh, VPN 10, uh, it might confuse, it might actually use this, might be confused to use this because it, use, it also has the VPN 10. So that will be a problem. So the solution uh, is to uh, So here, uh, this continuation, so we can't distinguish which entry is meant for which process. So the solution is to provide uh, ASID or an address space uh, identifier field in the TCB. So, so in addition to the valid and the protection bits, we also add another bit called, or a few bits of ASID to indicate which process. If the ASID is 1, then that is for process 1. If the ASID is 2, then that is for process 2. Okay, another uh, issue might be when sharing uh, pages. So it's, uh, sharing pages uh, like your lab for shared memory is important. Uh, in operating systems to improve performance. So two processes can share a page frame. 
let's say for example for shared libraries or for explicit uh, shared memory library routines. So in this example, process one is sharing physical page frame 101 with uh, process two. Okay. So we can have this uh, set up. So page frame number 101 and page frame number 101 are in the physical memory. So the, that means they are the, the same location in the physical memory. But uh, on the address space of the process, they are located at different locations. So I think I've demonstrated this in the lab for uh, shared memory. Okay. Uh, the command in Linux is uh, IPCS for you to be able to see the uh, inter-process communication uh, facilities and you can use PMAP uh, to check for shared pages. So this is how it will look like in the DLB if we have uh, shared uh, pages. So you can actually conserve uh, memory here. So another uh, issue is uh, TLB replacement policy. So remember that the TLB is limited in size. So as mentioned here, the typical sizes for a TLB will be 34, 32, 64, or 1 to 8 entries. So what happens when uh, the TLB is full? So let's say we have this uh, uh, reference uh, series, a right? series of references. So a common uh, approach for replacing a TLB entry is by the list, uh, it's called LRU, list recently used. You evict an entry that has not, be, not, that has not been used for a while. Right? So it takes advantage of locality of reference. So let's say these are uh, memory references, a series of memory references. So let's say uh, page zero. So you place that in the TLB. Okay. Uh, page uh, page seven. Okay. Page seven. Uh, zero here. Okay. One here, and then two here. So the the TLB is full, right? So that decision will have to be made uh, at this point, right? TLB insert, right? So here you're trying to perform TLB insert for this page number. Yes, for this uh, virtual page number, but uh, everything is occupied in the TLB. Which one, which entry are you going to replace? So you replace seven, so you place two here. Okay. And then you, uh, uh, you see your reference zero again is already in the TLB, so nothing to do. So you see here that we have one, two, three, four, five, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So these are a total of uh, 11 uh, TLB misses. So our goal is to minimize the TLB uh, miss rate. So LRU is a good uh, strategy, replacement strategy for replacing TLB entries. So here is an example of a real TLB entry for a MIPS uh, R4000 processor. So it's uh, 64 bits. And you see the encoding of the bits. So you have the VPN, you have the page frame number here, and then you have the uh, global bit here. Okay. You have the ASID. Okay. Uh, and many uh, other fields. You can uh, research the TLB for 
x86 processors. So I guess this ends this chapter. Uh, see you on the next video.